Jen Nielsen is the Secretary of Homeland Security, and she joins us uh, now. Ms. Secretary, thanks very much for, for coming on tonight. My pleasure. So what is the executive branch doing now to fix this? Well, uh, you probably don't have enough time for me to tell you all the things. I mean, look, just as you said at the top of your introduction, the president predicted this as a candidate. He predicted this before he was a candidate. Right. Uh, he continues to show leadership and to raise the alarm bells, but only now are we starting to see in mainstream press, not on this uh, particular channel, that there is a crisis, and that's what there is. So what we're doing is we have announced that we are sending uh, more migrants back to Mexico to await their immigration proceedings. Uh, we are pulling folks from the ports of entry to help interdict those who are choosing to come here illegally. Uh, it is a crime, despite what you just showed a uh, sitting senator saying, it is a crime to come illegally between ports of entry uh, to stop them and to provide humanitarian assistance by the smugglers. They are coming through remote areas. They're sicker than we've ever seen before. Yes. Um, so will we see an executive order from the White House to make E-Verify nationwide, to punish employers who are setting the bait in this trap, who are encouraging? illegal aliens to come into this country. That is part of the problem. I mean, I think what you saw also in the clip that you showed is many of the people coming are economic migrants. They are not truly seeking asylum. Right. We want to help those who are, uh, but many of them have been given magic words to come in and to get a job and take that job away from American. So we are looking to increase rates at E-Verify. Uh, we've made it easier for employers to comply with it, uh, but we're looking to do everything we can throughout the system to apply penalties where we can. Well, how about this? Why wouldn't your agency write an executive order, present it to the president, have him sign it, and, and do it tomorrow? Everything is on the table. We'll do everything we can within our authorities. What, what's the argument against doing that? Uh, there's just a debate with Congress as to whether the executive branch has the authority to do that. We can expand the program, uh, but right now it's only authorized in a voluntary way, not a mandatory way. Uh, so we can do it, but as you know what happens when we do is we get enjoined by the courts. So it's one of many issues we're looking to work with Congress on. We'll continue to uh, drive that. Do you think, I mean, it looks from, I mean, you probably have fresher knowledge than we do out here, but it looks like Congress is not going to act because one party has a vested interest in changing the population and the other party is, in effect, controlled by people who, who want illegal immigration. So would there be a downside for the president to act unilaterally on that question or, or for example, birthright citizenship? Would you be willing to draft an executive order eliminating birthright citizenship? I think, you know, Tuck, I think the president's been clear. All of that is on the table, including to close down the border. Right. We have to stop this flow into our communities. We have to stop the drugs. We have to stop the smuggling and trafficking and gangs. Right. Uh, he's very serious about it. So, yes, I think everything is on the table. In the meantime, I remain optimistic in the sense that I refuse to believe that the United States Congress will not act. I just, it's not a partisan issue. But it, no, it's not. And I, of course, I agree. And we've spent, you know, countless hours on making that exact point. But here you have the, a president who ran on the promise, it really was this, this central promise of his campaign, to secure the border. And things seem less under control now than they did then. And so when you ask about it, the answer is, well, Congress won't act when everyone knows they're never going to act. And so it does seem a little like buck passing. If you see what yeah, I, mean. I do. I would say I would expand that group a little bit. You mentioned the courts. Yes, uh, we have sure. a lot of, uh, in my opinion, uh, court decisions that do not understand the full situation, the operational realities that we face every day. Right. But it's also the criminals, and I think you saw that in the clip too. The smugglers sure. are more active than ever before at advertising how to come into this country with a child. Uh, we've broken up so-called child recycling rings, if you can believe it, in the last uh, couple months, which is where smugglers. Uh, uh, kidnap a child, they give it to an adult uh, to cross the border, present themselves as a family. Uh, once they get in, uh, because as you know, we can only hold families for 20 days, they send the child back and bring the child back with another family, another fake family, another right. adult. Uh, so the criminals play a huge part of this. We're working to crack down on all the transnational criminals, uh, the gangs and smuggling and trafficking. But I cannot be clear, and I don't think the president uh, can be any clear, he will take every action within his authority to stop this flow. Yeah. Um, so do we, does the U.S. government know exactly how many people are living in this country illegally? I've seen academic studies that put that number between 
11 million, 22 million, maybe more. What yes. is the real number? Uh, we debate it. Uh, I mean, I think that's accurate. I mean, so I think we don't the know. Is, we do not know. No. And part of that, think about it. Part of it is because we do not have the wall that the president continues to advocate for. We cannot, in every circumstance, tell you who is crossing the border. We so have a much better. You run a on. law enforcement agency. I among do. Other, uh, you have many roles, but right. that, but it's law the enforcement. largest law enforcement yeah, exactly. agency in the country. Yeah. That's right. Probably the world, actually. Yeah, probably. But, so. Yeah. Um, that must be a, a grave concern to you that we potentially have more than 10 million people here whose identities we don't know, could be over 20, um, whose identities we don't know, and like they could be anybody. Yes. And so why is that not the single most pressing problem the country has? In my opinion, right now, this is one of, if not the biggest crisis this country has faced in a decade. Truly. I mean, right. the security aspects of this, the humanitarian aspects of this have got to be addressed. So I agree with you. I, I would, this is at the very top of our list at DHS. We've announced today uh, that we're now treating this like a massive Cat 5 hurricane disaster. We are bringing all of the interagency together. We're asking everybody to chip in. We need to surge, surge down as yep. many resources as we can to the border. But Congress needs to look at this as a hurricane too, right? Where is the supplemental? Where are the additional uh, of authorities? Course. Where is the way to address this? But, but, I mean, I've covered hurricanes and natural disasters, and, and you see men in uniform with rifles. You see the yeah. National Guard there. Yep. Um, I read a bunch of background quotes from, high, from flag officers in the United States military who said that's a frivolous duty for us. We've got a real duty is over in Syria or whatever, some other country. Why wouldn't we put the U.S. military along our border if it's really a crisis of that magnitude? I think we're looking into that. We've made the request. Uh, I'm in constant contact with the Acting Secretary of Defense. Uh, I talked to some of the combatant commanders today. We are, in fact, pushing more and more military resources to the border. Who's and that's what's required. The, I mean, the President is the Commander-in-Chief of the Absolutely. military. Would it be possible for him to say, we're moving troops to the border tomorrow, and this is, I mean, he could say we're moving troops to Venezuela tomorrow if he wanted, but he can't do it to our own border? No, I think he absolutely, of course, has full authority to defend our country. Right. Uh, and I think that's what he's moving to do. I mean, his statements in the last week about closing the border are a perfect example. He will take all action that is required to do this. So, yes, it's on the table. We're actively moving uh, in discussions about moving more troops down now. We're working with the National Guards, working with the states. Uh, but absolutely, DOD plays a huge part of this. So, just one last question, and I, I don't even know if you have an answer, but why is it that the press, many in Congress, don't seem to recognize the magnitude of this. Do you think it's that they don't know? the details or they don't care? Do you have? Do you want to speculate as to why yeah, no one's responding? I mean, I, look, at this point, I'll be blunt. Uh, I think they're blinded by politics. Unfortunately, they are blinded for what they see as a request from this administration instead of looking at the request and the way in which it is directly affecting Americans. I mean, you mentioned fentanyl. Yeah. Last year alone, CBP and ICE interdicted more fentanyl to kill every American four times. I mean, the, the effects that are, this is having in American society cannot be understood. I agree so with that. Do we have any only, sense of how much got through without being uh, we do. We do not. But the good news is the president requested uh, and did receive additional resources at the border to interdict drugs, uh, and we are actively implementing this. But to your point, the facts don't lie. So I don't believe that they don't see it or they don't understand it. They are just willfully choosing to ignore it. But the more Americans who suffer, uh, they are going to have to look at this. I hope they do it yeah. sooner than later. I, I, I hope so, too. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it.